when you have a mountain that faces you, you don't have to do it alone. There are others that will do it with you and make sure you succeed. This is the journey, not just the mountain, just being around everybody else. Pretty moving, pretty special. It's like, kind of feels like uh, everything I've done has been worth it and I'm actually making a change and getting this opportunity to do something so cool with so many other amazing people to raise more awareness and help a lot more people. Having access to some of these endeavors, these sports as an amputee is the most magical and special thing I saw this year. We are not doing enough to create a larger table for that conversation. And Romp is trying to deliver on changing that. The goal of climbing for Romp is connecting humans, being present in the mountains, and then impacting a lot of people because of our experience together. You're giving the gift of freedom and independence by giving access to prosthetic care. Initially, I got involved with service to underserved amputees through a variety of volunteer experiences. And those experiences really opened my eyes to the global lack of access to quality prosthetic care. For the majority of amputees, that's really why ROMP started. We've always used the hashtag, what's your mountain, as our message for climbing for ROMP. It's meant to be a metaphor for all the mountains that everyone is dealing with physically, mentally, emotionally. This is not a problem to be solved. It's a process to be experienced when you climb. Stephen Crawford, originally from Nashville, Tennessee, living in Parker, Colorado now, getting ready for the 2026 Winter Paralympics for Border Cross and Bank Slalom. I train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I like to gravel bike, do some hiking, camping, exploring. Yeah, a lot of things, so, so many things. My name is Jason Malvar. I'm 41 years old and I'm in San Diego, California. My background in mountaineering is next to none. I have no experience at all and have done very light hiking. A lot of times it has been hiking my mountain bike around when there's obstacles that are just well beyond my level of skill. In October of 2019, I was on a motorcycle, got hit head on by a pickup truck. It was a crush injury. They actually salvaged my leg. I was walking on it for like three weeks and it, it got an infection in the bone. And even if I saved it, I wouldn't be able to skateboard or snowboard. So as soon as they said that, I had them cut it off. The accident was the best thing that ever happened to me. I was in a pretty bad spot. The day of my accident was the last day I used hard drugs. It sobered me up and it gave me purpose in life. It gave me my ambition back because I, I wanted to get better and I wanted to be the best version of myself. My injury was from a motorcycle accident about three years ago. Prior to my accident, I was really involved in just a lot of different sports. Mountain biking, cycling, snowboarding, just really anything out of the outdoors was really my support system to kind of help out with the chaotic lifestyle of raising a family. And seeing that that was possibly going to go away, it did scare me a lot. After coming home and receiving my prosthesis for the first time, taking my first couple steps, it gave me the sense of freedom and I wanted to try to regain other parts in my life that helped me with just day-to-day -day activities. That love for sports and being able to actively engage in them really helped in my mental and physical strengths and got me to where I am today. I kept seeing the romp stuff pop up on Instagram and met Kyle Stepp. Kept talking about how amazing of an experience it was and like getting to help people and see the people that you're helping. Got on the team, could not be more stoked to have this once in a lifetime opportunity to really come down here and see it firsthand and be able to help so many people and summon a volcano with so many other amputees is gonna be pretty special. This is definitely something I wanted to do. Not only to meet individuals that are similar to me that have different levels of amputation or limb loss, but seeing all of us accomplish something bigger than ourselves. 
Imabora was our first training hike with the entire team. I did some amount of training. It was nothing compared to just that level of elevation that we had on our first day. And that kind of brought me to reality of, wow, it's actually gonna be really hard. I already knew that coming in, but I did not know how it was gonna feel. Just that shortness of breath, that fatigue, even though I thought I was relatively fit at this time, just really humbled me and got me both excited and nervous up to the days leading to the Kayambi climb. Jason stood up in the introductions and he said, hi, I'm Jason and I've got two beautiful daughters. <laughs> <laughs> and a beautiful wife, you know? And that was like, part of his introduction was his family. That just gushed right out of him. You know, before he talked about anything amputation related, and that was amazing. That really stood out. Steadfast, strong, quiet. Just felt like every time you looked at him, he was ready, he was just gonna keep going. And that sort of like grounding force that he brought was really reassuring for a lot of people. Steve is just a crazy dude. He has an incredible sense of humor, making everybody laugh all week long. I mean, is there anyone more stoked on the planet? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, he's more stoked than I am. <laughs> he's always like, hey, you know, like, I want, can I give you a hug? <laughs> I'm like, of course you can, you know? He's the one that's like, I'm in it for life, whatever you need. I'm gonna volunteer for the next 10 climbing verombs. He saw the, the mountain and the impact. He was so good at connecting those two, being himself. There's not an ingenuine bone in his body. I have not always been happy. Didn't really admit to myself or learn how unhappy I was till I was making a lot of poor choices for several years. But I've always maintained this optimistic, making people laugh attitude, yeah. <laughs> Lowering the trim line down a bit on the practice hike, it was just a tad, tad bit high. It was made, I haven't really done much mountaineering and getting used to climbing at such a big angle. I was putting pressure on the back of my leg, so it kind of got some skin breakdown and caused a little blister, but he's taking care of it, getting that pressure off the back of my leg, so I'll be A-OK -okay and let this blister start healing and it won't get worse when I'm uh, climbing Kayambe. Go around, buddy. Need a trim? Need a trim? Right there. Much better. I've been yeah. Kayambe was definitely something I was really excited for, really nervous and very anxious. This was everything I've been waiting for, you know, ever since the Zoom calls that we had in the beginning, things becoming more and more real. It's looking epic, dude. It is a wonderful looking, uh, it's like the gnarliest volcano peak I've ever seen for sure. That is so sick. Oh. <laughs> Climbing up to Kayambe on this super badass road. Got uh, the homies Max, Jamie, and Zach in here. The driver Jose could not be more excited. Woo! We made it. We're here. Refuge camp. It's Kayamba here in all its majestic viewing for us. Can't believe it. Made it all the way up to the refuge. Just a few more days. We'll be up there. Getting to the refuge and like just seeing Kayambe behind the refuge, you'd walk out and see it. It was so powerful. It was a very spiritual experience to be that close to the volcano that high up. And it was so beautiful. The training hike was awesome, getting everyone out there, getting our legs used to climbing that elevation. Got up to nearly the glacier. It was a pretty rad trail going up the sandy like scree. Feeling good, man. It's uh, exciting to finally do a little rock climb and get up here. Huh. I want you. There you go. All this training, man, all this adrenaline, just seeing all the folks up here. I just feel like we can all do it together. There's nothing that we can't accomplish. I'm so stoked to be here. This is my first time seeing a glacier in real life. It's surreal. It looks so much bigger up here than it does down there. Being able to climb with a group of people that have had a completely different life experience because they've had access to prosthetic care. It's extraordinary to see how important that is and it just needs to be accessible to everyone, especially in places where it's not accessible. This is a right, you know. 
Next day was just the rest day. Some good talks from Carl and the guides and uh, everyone else on the team. It was nice having a lot of other experienced climbers with us that were able to coach us and like tell us kind of what to expect even though you don't really fully understand it until you get up there and you're getting in your crampons for most of us the first time in our life. Getting up, getting ready for the hike, getting all suited up, it was, it felt incredible. Like it was, it was finally here. It was finally time to climb my mountain and really show people what you're capable of with access to good prosthetic care. Feeling pretty good. Only had a couple hours of sleep. Felt a little out of breath waking up, but it all started coming together. Reason why we're here and that just pumped me up. Just can't wait to get up there. And enjoy. Yes, okay. sir. Let's go for that. Let's do it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. Super gnarly. They said it was steep, but I didn't realize how steep it was. We are working our way up. It was pretty rough, I think, for uh, Jason at some points, just being coming from sea level. But it was nice that our guide and myself, you know, we're a team, man. We're, we're going up and just, you know, taking breaks when we needed to, stopping. Feeling really good. I'm um, really, really blessed with this weather today. It's super, super nice. I mean, we're about to the glacier and I'm still in like a base layer. So uh, yeah, excited to get on the glacier for the first time in my life. It's gonna be pretty special. <laughs> oh, just stoked right now. Feel pretty good. Yeah, awesome to be out here. So much fun. Oh, it's a blast. It was cool to see that, you know, level of motivation and support on the climb. You know, just the things that we do daily and at the hardest points of our life, you know, just having that level of support really helped to push me to continue forward. It became harder and harder, uh, but I couldn't help but look up in our surroundings because I really wanted to, you know, keep that image and keep that picture of Kayami in my head forever. Uh, there was a lot of points where I wasn't sure if I was going to make it. I just knew that I wanted to keep pushing on for multiple reasons for you know the folks that are out there with, with limb loss, limb differences, needing prosthetic devices, folks that don't know if they can take on these difficult challenges in, in their lives. I've had many and this was another one. I remember getting out of the hospital months later I made this decision that that this will not defeat me. This is not going to define who I am. This is something that I'm going to adapt and overcome. And this mountain, the hardest thing I've ever done was something that I will not be defeated by and had to overcome for myself. The socket was feeling kind of loose coming up. Definitely some sweating in there. The uh, liner and sleeve were kind of uh, falling down a little bit. Had to do a little bit of surgery and cut uh, the the base layer on the legs a little bit so I can access the socket, pulled everything out. Was able to kind of reseat uh, the liner and the sleeve, put it back on, feeling kind of loose, but definitely less wobble than, uh, than before. So definitely had a team helping out and supporting that. Appreciate y'all. But as you're, you're going higher and higher on this glacier and you start off on like small crevasses and you're stepping over them and then it gets to the point where you're actually like having to like hike around crevasses because they're getting opening up wider and wider, getting bigger and bigger on this glacier, this like million year old ice it made you feel small in like the best way possible. It's like a very humbling experience. Uh, like words can't, I, I can't even convey in words how special it felt to be up there on the glacier with so many incredible people. Got up pretty high, we switched teams around. My lungs were doing really good until about the last uh, thousand feet of elevation. And that's when it really hit and really got hard. And we got some words of wisdom from Zach the night before that really stuck with me as, you know, take the people you love 
with you in your mind and let them motivate you. That, that kept me going and also to, to show people, you know, what we can accomplish as amputees, people with disabilities. And I think that speaks for people that are dealing with uh, physical disabilities, adversities, mental, anything, you know, like climbing your mountain. It, it, it taught me a lot about myself to push through and it showed me how strong I was with every step you take. When you're coming up those last steps, everyone's cheering for you and it like really sinks in and it felt so good. It was like one of the proudest moments of my life. Something I never even dreamed or thought about doing before, but I had this cool opportunity to raise money and help people. Volcano actively erupting right over there, man. It's unbelievable. He said that this climb gave him something to be proud of. And it was the first time he had been proud of himself. Everyone deserves to be proud of themselves. <laughs> Stevie's the man, he deserves to be proud of himself. I remember seeing folks at the top of the climb just cheering me on and the sun started coming out. And it just really hit me that I'm almost there and it really pushed me. I just felt this surge of energy kind of coming in and my pace started coming, going a little bit faster at the top. I imagine just seeing the faces of my family. I held on to that vision. That definitely helped push me along. When I finally got to the top, it hit me with a lot of emotions that I'm not done yet, that there's still things that I want to accomplish. And this is one of those things and I was just so overjoyed, so overwhelmed with the gratitude. And I couldn't have done this without the entire team. It's just been the most memorable experience and I'll never forget this. There's nothing, nothing, no mountains compared to like what anyone else is going through, honestly. Like you can climb your mountain, you know, you can do it. It's, it's an incredible feeling of satisfaction you get and this trip's definitely shown me how, how good it feels to be part of something so much bigger than yourself. So if you're interested in helping people, pay it forward, spread stoke, share love, and make this world a better place.